Hello everybody. My name is Krzysztof Wilczek. I'm head of track analytics at Plaza Tora. Today I would like to give you a presentation of our latest temper. I think it's a great example how we introduce new technologies into track maintenance machines. However, as we're having a virtual conference, I will try to bring the machine to your home or office or wherever you are watching. So let me swap the camera and show you what I mean. So let me introduce you to the Unimat 08 4x4. It's a universal tamping machine. It is designed to tamp everything, but it's actually turnout and single fault correction where you get the most performance. Just imagine at railway stations where you have many switches in parallel, and this is where these machines really shine. So let's have a look at the lifting and lining units, which we find here. So before I show you the new technologies that we have implemented, I would like to show you the difference between what makes this tamping machine different from a regular train. And at the core of every tamping machine, there are two units that work in tandem, the lifting and lining unit and the tamping unit. So let's start off with the lifting unit, the lifting and aligning unit. So this device is specially designed just for lifting up the track into the correct position. And as you can see, it's really massively built. It has to do all the strength work that is required. And uh, there's a small detail which I would like to share with you. So have a look at those rollers. So the, these rollers are responsible for grabbing, for making the connection with the rail. They are placed underneath the rail head and uh, can stay there even when the machine moves because they, they roll as well. But sometimes, for, uh, for example, when you have an isolation joint, um, you cannot use them because otherwise you would damage the, uh, the, the isolation joint. So for this, there is this hook that you can place underneath the rail foot or underneath the sleeper. So I think it's a nice little detail. The next thing is the third line lifting unit. So for example, when you have a huge double diamond crossing um, th that is really heavy, and uh, in such circumstances, this unit wouldn't be enough to, to put it up in place. So this is why you have this third line unit that grabs the outermost rail and gives additional support to the lifting and lining unit. It reduces the wear and the stress on the turnout. So let's move to the tamping unit. While the lifting and lining unit holds the track in the right position, the tamping unit has the job to compact the ballast underneath the sleeper. And this is done in three steps. So the first step is that the tines penetrate the ballast. The second step is they're, mo uh, they're moving in a squeezing motion where they're compacting the ballast. And the third step is moving them out again and moving to a new position. And this is what you call a split head. So you, uh, the operator can split the four tamping tines into half. And with this, he can reach uh, tight positions, um, especially that you find within uh, turnouts and uh, diamond crossings. Next up on this machine are the two brushing units, the big one and the small one. They basically do the same thing, but are configured a little bit differently. So their job is to brush away all the loose ballast that is left on the track. And this is especially useful for high-speed lines, where this loose ballast can be wheeled up by high-speed trains. And let's have a look inside into this sweeper units where you see the brushes and how they operate and uh, move the ballast onto this, uh, this conveyor belt and where it's moved outside. And this is something that this train has in common with other trains. It is equipped with ETCS and is compatible with tracks that have the European train control system in place. Now that we have covered the basic operations of the machine, I want to show you the new technologies that we implemented into it. And we are following a simple strategy. We want to automate tasks that are either repetitive, prone to error, or put workers in a hazardous position. So the first thing I want to show you is our measuring trolley. It is equipped with an inertial measuring unit that you usually find on the measuring vehicles. Uh, it can run up to 60 kilometers an hour, and you can think of it like um, a navigation system you would have in, a, in your car. 
And um, imagine a situation like this. You have a section of uh, one kilometer of track where you have a couple of single defects that you want to correct. And in this setup, you would race down the track, uh, race down the section with, uh, with this tro trolley down and create a precise map of the track geometry. And when you go back, this trolley and the computer guides you towards those defects. And uh, if you've ever been on a tamping machine during night shifts, you will know how difficult it is to find the precise spot at night. And I think once you have worked with an inertial measure unit like this, you don't want to go back. Oh, wait a second. Florian. Oh, hello, Florian. Hello, Krzysztof. How are you? Fine, you? So let me introduce you to Florian Auer. He's the Director of Technology and Innovation, and he's responsible for all the technology that we are implementing. He's my boss, and I guess it's his honor to present the highlight of these machines. Florio, would you be kind enough to show us around? Of course, yes. Thank you for having the opportunity. The assistance system is definitely the highlight of this machine. Basically, it consists of two types of sensors. The first sensor is a 360 laser scanner uh, ahead of the machine on a retractable beam. And Second, the system consists of four line scanners. The data stream of both the sensor uh, of the 360 degree laser and the line scanners are merged together, processed in real time and sent to the assistant computer. Welcome at the operator's cabin. Here you have a very good view on the whole tamping area. We have a very good view on the whole lifting and lining unit. We have a very good view on the whole tamping unit. And what we also see are screens. The first screen is showing the roller on the left hand side of the lifting and lining unit. The central monitor is showing all the status of the machine. This screen shows in another perspective the roller on the right hand side of the lifting and lining unit and the next screen is showing the highlight. This is the screen of the assistant system. So all the data from the sensors ahead of the machine are processed in real time in a artificial intelligence computer and the computer generates automatically exact positions for the proposed working units. All the proposals here are sent directly to the working units, to the tamping unit, as well as to the lifting and lining unit and to the three self-checking lights. If they turn green, the system shows that everything is in place, correct in place, and the system has found a valid solution. It's now the duty of the operator to start the tamping process while pressing the pedal. And at the very end of the shift, all the data is sent to the work acceptance protocol and within the work acceptance protocol, every single quality related information can be then displayed and hand over to the infrastructure manager. So thank you, Florian, for showing us the assistance system. I'm at the back of the machine and I want to show you something uh, I think really nice. Um, so you have to imagine every time you temp, you're doing a correction to the track geometry. So you're basically putting the track somewhere new. So to avoid collisions, you have to check uh, for the track clearance and platform clearance. And usually this is done manually where a worker goes outside and checks if um, everything is within specifications. On these machines, we implemented another free, uh, 360 degree scanner at the back and it scans the surrounding and uh, adds this information to the protocol. And the machine does this automatically with the work acceptance protocol. This eliminates a safety hazard for the track workers. For us, it is a farewell to this machine. 
It is getting the final touches and in a couple of weeks it will get shipped to Belgium to InfraBel for its service. Uh, I hope you liked this presentation as much as I did filming it and I can't wait to get your questions at the Q&A session.